So Jayet, so going back to uh, our text. So last time, uh, I don't want to read through what we read. I uh, just wanted to bring up uh, what uh, this text is talking about. Basically, they the family is sitting in, in, in the front of the house. They're sitting in uh, some kind of living room or the entrance of the house. And, you know, they're doing different things. Then a father asked his son, uh, what is he reading? Then he said he was reading one of the stories. Then his father asked him to narrate that story, the thing that he was reading. So the story goes, um, there is one, uh, uh, there's verbs, uh, these words you have to know. Uh, where is it? Waladun uh, Rabi, right? So we have this word, Rabi. Uh, so a stupid boy, meaning like someone who's not that bright, uh, who kathirul kalam, lots of speech, meaning he talks too much. This is a very nice expression. Okay. Uh, then, uh, so father gave him an advice saying that Ida takallamta fakhtasir. When you speak, try to make it, you know, the point is that it's shortened. Ikhtasara, we talked about this, mean to shorten, right? So, uh, and then, so I suppose the boy is trying to follow his father's um, advice. So when he was asked, where were you? You know, he said, souk, meaning a market. Now here, the context is that a market makes sense, uh, but it would be appropriate to say, to say the market, right? I was in the market so that everybody knows which market we're talking about. Meaning the father knows which market he was. He's a small kid. He's not going to be roaming around any market. Right, so the proper way would have been uh, a souk, the market. So uh, he just said a market. Then the father said zid, and this is also a good verb that uh, we learn. Zada yazidu zid means to uh, increase. Here in the context, to add, like increase or add alif and lam, meaning the father wants him to uh, do it proper grammatical way or proper context wise to say al asuk. Then he, what he does is he, he adds it at the end because he said, su uh, qal, you know, instead of adding in the beginning, he adds at the end. Then the father used another uh, very important verb, qaddama yuqaddimu qaddim, right? Meanings to, uh, I told you, qaddama has a lot of different meanings, right? To offer something, to present something. Here it is like to bring uh, forward, right? So the father is saying, no, don't add at the end, bring it to the beginning. Uh, <clears throat> then uh, he, he ends up uh, just, you know, bringing Alif and Lam and Suk all together. So he's he's completely confused, right? So then we stopped here by saying that uh, the father left So the father left and he asked Bakr, right? So we talked about this. And Dahika Yadhaku, right? So then uh, from the next page, father says, Al Ab. Limada ajabatka hadhil kissatu. Why did uh, remember this verb is a very interesting verb? Why did this uh, why did this kissa because this is the subject, this story pleased you? Why did you like it? Bottom line, right? Why did you like this story? Okay, so you understand this context. Limada ajabatka kas you. Why did it please you? Hadhil kissa. This kiss this story, why did it please you? Okay, so I'm, that, I'm telling you this verb, the way it uses is very interesting. So get used to it. Bakr said, Lianna, this is, of course, you have to know, Lianna means, uh, Lianna is because, because, right? Lianna, because. Uh, because al walad the boy, uh, there's something a little bit grammatical issue. I will maybe briefly mention. Because the boy atala, atala is to uh, tala is to be something long. Atala is to prolong something to make it long, right? Uh, to make long or prolong, right? Prolong something like that. So uh, because the boy prolonged and this is a past tense uh endama endama is when okay endama is when 
for example endama here means uh, when we are referring to it when in a statement not in a question anybody knows what word we use uh when we want to say when did you do something like in a question i'm pretty sure we had it when did you eat when did you go hmm? you guys remember it's mata right mata this is a question when are endama uh, and the endama is is something that like you're mentioning uh, uh, when something happened, right? Not uh, not in the question. So because the uh, the sun uh, prolonged when arada, very very important word and extremely used. Uh, I think most of the time we use this verb uh, in the present tense, but uh, this is a past tense. Arada, uh, arada, and you. Redo. Arada you redo. Anybody know? Yes, that is to want. Arada you redo. Very, very important word. And remember, just like English, you cannot have want and to do some other action, the verb, without in English saying to. Okay? And this is the precisely in Arabic language as well. And every time you say arada, you read and you want to mention you want to do something you have to bring an no arada is not the uh, masdar form arada is the past tense arada you read okay iradatan is the uh, masdar but here arada is a past tense okay so so please make sure that you know you understand that why the an is here it's just exactly like english it's just exactly like English. Yes, it's a singular a past tense. Yes, arada yuridu. So this an is coming that I he wanted. Okay, so uh, because when he wanted, so he wanted to, he wanted to what? Yachtasir is the same verb that we had. Ikhtasara yachtasir. It is to shorten. We heard this, right? Shorten. So, uh, let me translate the whole thing, then I'll talk about a few grammar issues that we have here. It says, Because the boy or the son, he prolonged when he wanted to make it shorten. Okay, so the bottom line is that is going back to the story, you know, he wanted to make the shorten as his father said, but, you know, then the conversation, it just, you know, went too long. Uh, uh you know that's what it's saying right everything's clear the meaning is clear now a uh, few just i'll quickly mention few things these are a little bit advanced uh, grammar uh, maybe this is not the perfect time but if you're wondering why we have a fata here this is because of lianna okay this is something that inshallah we will learn we have it's called inna wa akhawatuha inna and its sister Okay, so we have this some uh, nawas. This is special types of uh, harf uh, that uh, makes. Um, we'll study them properly, right? Just only only thing I want to mention here right now is that this fata you might because you have to kind of be aware of why this fata damakasra is coming. Uh, so if you're wondering why is it here, it's not a typo. It is because of lianna. Second thing is that uh, why we have uh, fata here because the verb is yaktasir. Uh, right the past tense oh it takes the fatha at the end but the present tense takes what edama so why do we have a fatha here is it a typo because i told you this book makes a lot of typos so sometimes we might assume it's a typo well here it is not a typo yes it is in the mansu form it is same situation is because of an okay we will also study them properly. Just for now, remember, anytime you have an, uh, uh, like, uh, you know, then the verb will be, uh, will take fata. Anyway, don't worry too much about these things. Just uh, if something that, you know, bothering you, you want to know, this is what it is. But we're not studying them. They have lots of different rulings we have to understand. So for so good, Jayat. Then we have, uh, then the father says, Hiya qissatun jamila. Okay, very simple sentence. Uh, wa, uh, wa shukran laka ya bakr. And he said, shukran is a thank uh, laka for you 
ya bagus so syukran lak this is an expression we say thank you syukran lak would be a thank you so if you want to say thank you to a female you will say shukran laki but if you stop the best thing to do especially when uh, it's a singular person whether male or female it doesn't matter you can say shukran lak you know you stop at kaf you don't have to say shukran laka you don't have to say shukran laki you can say it but uh, this is what you can also do and quickly see if you guys are following through if you are trying to give thanks to many people what would you say shukran what Let's say more than two. Yes. Shukran lakum. Excellent. Very nice. Jai. <clears throat> okay. So uh, then Bakr says, uh, Afwan. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I have a feeling it's going to be a Dhamma here. I mean, Sukun here. Uh, and then Afwan. Afwan, is, is, Afwan has a lot of different contexts. Depends on when you use it. Afwan can mean sorry, like, you know, you bumped into someone, you know, and then he looked at you, he said, Afwan, you know, that's fine. You can say that meaning, it means you're sorry. Uh, uh, here, it, it means it's coming as uh, you are welcome. You understand? So this, this word, they use it in many different contexts. Jayit. Uh, Af by... Uh, Standard meaning of is pardon, to pardon something, right? Uh, but I don't want to write pardon here because it is not coming when you somebody says thank you. When you say of one, it means you welcome. So this is how we'll be using it. Okay? Allahumma inna ka'afun tuhibu la anni. Right? Remember that dua that we say, you know, pardon us. So this is the same verb. But uh, you have to know the usage, especially in, in the standard uh, Arabic, how we use them. So Afwan Ya Walidi. You welcome, oh um, father, right? Uh, then we have kam kam isa. So here we have kam asa. And you know, this is fine, the spelling is fine, but pronunciation is not fine. You cannot say kam sa, you know, you can't. So what do you do? You put a kasra when you do a pronunciation. Kamisa al an. Kamisa atul an. Okay, so remember this expression, you just have to. Memorize. It's the same thing you will always say every time you ask about time. What time is it now? You can just say kamisa. That means what time. Uh, when you say al-an, it means now. So what time is it now? Uh, then Bakr said asatul al-ana al-ashira. Okay. The time is now 10. Uh, 10 probably in the morning. I, what did he say? Well, yeah, of course it has to be in the morning, I suppose. I forgot if, whether they're sitting after dinner or after breakfast. So, and, and also, please do note that you don't say asatul ana ashara. You know, ten. No, you have to use the uh, uh, ordinal. Huh? Yes, ordinal number, right? The first, second, third. So here, instead of saying, uh, instead of saying uh, ashara. You have to say ashira. Okay. You want to say thalatha, uh, three, you say thalitha. Now, then hayya lin now. Okay, so this was at the dinner time because uh, we're talking about sleeping, right? Hayya, remember we talked about hayya. Let's go. Lin now. Uh, for this is a li. Li is for a now. Uh, remember, this is, a, uh, this is how the word is. But when you add this harful jar, this is how you have to write it. Uh, let's go for sleep. Then Abna, the children are saying, Tusbihu ala khair, ya abi. <clears throat> Tusbihu ala khair. What is asbaha here? The verb is asbaha. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time here because this is uh, more like an expression. So I'll just uh, give you an expression. Uh, when you say Tusbihu ala khair, uh, yes, it is related to morning. Excellent. Yes, it is related to morning. So because of sabah, very good uh, observation. <clears throat> so we, if you know that there are some dua that we are supposed to read in the morning, so it means that, you know, when you enter upon in the morning. So when I say asbahtu, like I have entered upon the morning. 
So there's a lot of different words throughout the time in Arabic language. Inshallah, we will study them. But uh, it, these words comes in two different contexts. One context where it comes because of the time, like uh, what you mentioned. This relates to the morning. So asbaha now here is talking about something that relates to morning. But these verbs also is very confusing. Comes they in in different meaning. These verbs come as uh, when you say asbaha something. Uh, for example, if you say asbaha Muhammad tajiran, you know, so asbaha uh, is a completely out of tension since I already brought it up. Muhammadun tajiran. Uh, anybody knows what tajiran or muallimun? Since if you muallimun. Okay, <clears throat> so here the asbaha, yes, it's coming as a become. Yes, so be careful. Asbaha Muhammadun Mu'alliman. Here Muhammad became. Uh, it's not that, you know, he became in the morning something. You know, it might, but depends on the context. This context, it just purely means he became. And there's a lot of different words that, like at least five or six of them, uh, they all mean the same thing, become, become, become. Uh, but when you fine tune them, then you have to, there's a different ways of uh, you should use the proper word. Anyway, this is a little bit uh, out of tangent. But uh, the point is here. Otherwise, if I just tell you this has something to do with the morning and then you find this word coming, you try to translate as a morning. It will not make sense. Okay, It will not make sense. But <clears throat> here is coming as a, a morning context. So what is what is it saying? It's a expression and how does it relate to at night i'll explain to you it says Tusbihu ala khair. basically what they're trying to say is good night this expression this is also modern expression okay this is a modern expression he say good night that's all they're trying to say okay uh in our modern context whenever we want to say good night we will say Tusbihu ala khair. So basically, but how does it relate to good night? Because it's talking about like something, meaning like you may you enter in the morning with the goodness. You understand how it's relate? So this is what they're saying, but the context or, or the meaning or the expression uh, is good night. So here's saying, Tuzbala khairi abi, and you say, Tuzbihina ala khairi ummi. So these things we haven't studied. How do you, we say to a female, uh, because when you say tusbihu, this is for the masculine singular. And how do we say to feminine singular? If you say tusbihina, we have to add this ya and nun. So something we haven't done. So don't worry too much about this thing right now. If you can uh, understand this difference and what this expression means. This is a good expression. You should, uh, you, you know, we're also learning Arabic. We should be able to use them in the modern context. You know, so these expressions are very important. Good so far. Any question here? Uh, then we have a hadith here. It says, uh, now, uh, it, it has a little bit of um, uh, words, so let's uh, let's go through this. It says, uh, so the word is rawaha. Uh, uh, you rawihu, rawaha means um, um, so rawaha here, rawaha by itself it means a uh, air to vent, but when you have rawaha an, as soon as you add an, the meaning kind of changes drastically. Okay, so it becomes to rest, to relax. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's one of those words that completely, uh, maybe there's some, I'm pretty sure there's some, you know, connection between them, but uh, be aware. There's a lot of verbs you will find that, you know, it, by itself, it means completely, completely different as soon as you add some kind of um, a preposition that goes with it, it will, yeah, maybe ruh, yeah, that's true. So the ruh is the same thing, yes, ruh, yes, ruh is the spirit. So, yeah, exactly. There, I'm pretty sure there's some connection. Those Arabs, you know, they figure the whole thing out. We might have a hard time understanding their mind, but they know, uh, they knew what they were doing. Let's just put it that way. 
<clears throat> but so you have to be careful when the rawaha comes by itself it, it's more like venting airing fan these sort of things but when you bring an then we were actually talking about resting relaxing okay so that's what we have here rawihu and this is a command verb so rawihu so this is a command to plural okay rawihu anil qulub meanings uh, the here anil qulub means uh, to give the hearts a rest a relax you know uh, that kind of uh, meaning sa'atan ba'da sa'a uh, I'm not super familiar with this expression, or the you know, it's but it's what it means like time to time. This is what my guess would be like. Sa, sa, you know what sa means? Hour, bada hour, one hour after another hour. So I'm pretty sure that's not what Professor Vasa means, uh, or it could be that's what it means. Uh, that every one hour give your heart a rest, you know. But if we if that's what it means literally, you know, then we will be obliged to do that in a way. So I'm not sure this is a literal meaning. I have a feeling this is an expression, meaning give your uh, heart, you know, a rest. Heart here could mean just yourself, you know, give yourself a, a, a rest, relax yourself, or, you know, once in a while, uh, periodically. Yes, that would be better. Uh, I will actually write it down for you. Yeah, periodically. Yes, that it has this meaning. Uh, now, if some I, don't quote me on this because I've uh, I'm not I didn't see this hadith before. If somebody say, well, this literally what Professor Wilson means, uh, then it could be that every hour give yourself a rest. But uh, from the way I feel it, it's probably that's what it means. You know, give yourself a rest once in a while periodically. Now, then it says <clears throat> for in uh, it should be inna. Uh, by the way, uh, here's remember what I just mentioned before inna wa akhwa tuha. I just mentioned to you that there's uh, some words. Uh, inna and his sister in, when in arabic we say sister that means it has other words that takes the same grammatical ruling and one of them we just had it which was lianna okay this is the sister of inna and here's your inna so when inna comes the the, uh, the uh, subject or the noun we'll talk about them later it gets a fatha so this is also not a mistake this is the same reason why we have fatha here Okay, anytime you have inna, anna, ka anna, like inna, laita, la alla. Uh, inna here, of course, you know what inna means. It's uh, verily, it's emphasis. Okay, verily, certainly, whatever. Inna kuluba, uh, verily, the hearts. Uh, by the way, you know what kulub? Kulub is the plural of qalb. Okay, qalb. Plural of qalbun, which is a heart. Fa inna kuluba ida kallat. Okay. Uh, kalla. Kalla here is coming as the meaning of tab, like uh, uh, tired, exhaust. You know, you become exhaust, uh, tired, you know, exhausted. Okay. Uh, it's coming as a, this meaning. And this is also a verb. Okay. <coughs> and why do we have? Kallat as a feminine, who can tell me? This is a little bit, uh, if you don't know, you don't know, but uh, let's see who can guess. Why, uh, wh what feminine is it referring to? What gets tired? And why is it feminine? Hmm? Okay, Kulub, good. So why Kulub is uh, female? It's not a female, it's heart. It's definitely, uh, I don't see any femality here. Okay, I'll give you, you were right. This is because of Kulub, because we know it's talking about the hearts. But do you know why? I might have mentioned here and there, but this is something uh, very, uh, one of the foundation or fundamental rules in Arabic is that what? Who can tell me the rule? Hmm. The plural of objects are treated feminine, singular feminine in Arabic. Okay. Plural of objects equal to singular feminine only for grammar okay only for grammar you guys will remember this very important rule okay and uh, and that's what's happening because Kulub is the plural of qalb. that's why it is referring to uh, as for example qalam if you say qalam you say hada qalamun this is a pen 
And you know the hada is for masculine, right? We learned this. Hada qalamun. But now you want to say these are pen. Are you gonna say how will I in all of this thing? No, you will say hadihi, which is for female. Hadihi aqlamun. What happened here? You know, this is a plural. You don't say she is pan, you know, whatever, or it is pan, but this is how it is. As soon as you make it into plural, we'll be treating as what? Singular feminine. Very, very important rule. And this is not, I mentioned it, this is not only for the nouns, it's also for the verbs. As you can see, this is a verb. So even the verb is treating that, uh, uh, that uh, collection of objects as a feminine. Now, so <clears throat> it says either qallat uh, amiyat okay if it's if it's exhausted then it amiyat it's coming because uh, you know remember these hadith you know they, they're very eloquent just translating is not going to work you have to know what uh, it's referring to because amiya would be uh, it, it would be too like you know blind or something like that uh, let me quickly check for you guys yeah, to be blind and to be uh, obscure something, right? So, uh, uh, Professor Islam is using that verb, amiyat. So, again, this ta is coming because it's still referring uh, referring to uh, the kulub. So, it's saying that, uh, by the way, we just learned the either. We didn't learn it. We start seeing, we just start seeing this either because this is, I told you, it's a very important uh, uh, grammar rules about how to say because either is for if and when, right? So, he's saying either. Kallat amiyat. So you have to know there's a uh, there's a comma here. Meaning says if it is exhausted, referring to the heart. If the heart is exhausted, amiyat, it will be like uh, blinded or like obscure. Like you know, you understand. You we know the meaning. What uh, Professor Islam is trying to say. If you tired it, it will be you know maybe you know but the verb that professor Sam used is hamia meaning to be blinded so i have to know exactly how would we translate but i'm pretty sure we all know what professor Sam is trying to say right we all know what he's saying and it, it kind of makes sense we understand what he's saying that he, the heart might be a little bit tired and you know something like that now good so uh, sometimes they put this hadith, I love it, uh, because it, it's at some extra benefit, we learn something, and the words will be a little bit difficult here and there, so, you know, I understand that, uh, don't worry too much, whatever you can pick up, and then when we go to the exercise, that's when we know what this book is expecting us to know, right, and we start off with the al-kalimatul jadida, the new word, so the book is expecting you to pretty much know all of these words. Okay. Uh, I don't feel like going through all of them as always. And uh, only thing, uh, so this would be an exercise for you guys because for all of them, you should, I always mentioned you don't learn the way the book is giving like the khitu. You would learn what? At this point, either you say ya khitu or Better yet, for the verbs, you have to know khata yakhitu, right? So meanings, uh, you should you should learn by both uh, past and the present. <clears> Television, <throat> and I also give it ilfaz, right? Which is the TV. Majmua, I told you, group. Yatruku, we went through this thing. Ajabat ka, we went through this thing. Ajaba, yujibu, right? Aba, which is a plural for ab. So we went through all of them. So there's no point for me to really uh, go through them again. Rawaha, uh, right? We just had it. Kalla. So try to find out if you can find the root word, and especially say verb, can you also find uh, the pre past and the present. One one, it has a two meanings. Who can give me two meanings for the one one? Quick type. So it is title, one one is title, another one is address, right? Uh, like your home address uh, and the title of the book, right? So this is very, very good word. Uh, with one word, you get bonus, you get one extra, right? Shahada, you shahidu, to watch something. So for example, you will be using shahada to say, I'm watching something in the television. 
Ushahidu at Tilfaz. Ushahidu television. Right? Uh, like that. Yal Abu Yunus Laiba Yal Abu to play. Uh, this they keep on making here mistake. Krissa is the story. Krissas. Uh, yes. Krissas would be the plural of Krissa. Kasas is, is a tale. I, I explained to you. So Krissa uh, is a story. Krissas is the plural of story. And Kasas. Kasas is a tale. Okay. Sa'ala uh, yas'alu, we have Ahad, we know Rabi, we talked about Ikhtasara yakhtasirosi. Sometimes it gives, uh, that's interesting. Atala. Now, uh, this this kind of verb conjugation, I don't want to, one day we have to sit and then talk about, it's the same situation what's happening here. You remember last time uh, we explained what happened to Alif, you know, Kana, why did uh, we lost Alif when we want to say Kuntu? Uh, same things is happening here. Because oh, as soon as you add ta here, the al, the lam will get a sukun. Once lam, lam gets sukun, well, we have a problem. Now we have two sukuns. Alif has a sukun, lam has a sukun. So we remove one of them and we remove the alif. And this is how we get it. So um, uh, this is a good for practice, like, you know, as an exercise. But the main benefit is that you memorize and you kind of like come naturally. Okay. Now, uh, Zid, uh, which is, uh, oh, you should make sure you know the past tense also, Zada, Yazidu. Okay, so we talk about Afwan. Yeah, it is a sukun here. Uh, that's what I thought. And Khair, Inna, uh, Inna uh, is uh, indeed, and it has the other sister there. They're related in terms of, not the meaning. The meaning, this is indeed, uh, like that kind of thing. And Lianna is because. Okay, but what they do is that uh, they put a fatha for for the subject and we will study them uh, don't worry uh when did we get this lim no it should be lam uh when did we get lam lam is a you have to know we have to show you in the context it's it negates uh, a verb uh, uh, for the past tense Using the anyway, when it comes, we'll show you. And endama, uh, remember, endama is when <clears throat> okay, when in a statement. Okay, so uh the next the next page, uh we we skip this thing. This is just showing you, yeah. Uh you make sure you know these things. I'm pretty sure you guys do. Okay, so what we have here. So we have at tadribat, at tadribul awal. So let's see what it's saying. It says, Al Abu Yatrukul Jaraita. Okay, we had this sentence before. And of course, uh, uh, it's coming because of the object. So the father is uh, leaving or leaves, this is present tense. The what is Jaraid? Anybody remembers? Newspapers, right? Leaves the newspapers. Bakrun Yakrao Kissatahu. Okay, remember how you be careful how you read it. You cannot say Kissatuhu. You know, it's not going to make any sense. So you have to read. And the reason why I'm emphasizing here, because you are adding something else. So this is very difficult in the beginning. Which one is a fatah? Which one is who's dhamma? Right? And we started talking about object pronouns in, in this chapter, especially this chapter has been focusing and giving you guys lots of uh, exercises related to, or at least words related to this object pronoun. Uh, here it's not actually, uh, actually object pronoun. This is a, a positive pronoun, but uh, we've been we can we use this same thing uh, in um, in the object as well. Okay, so uh, the bakor is reading uh, his his story. Okay, albin tutusha hidu television. We had exactly same sentence. Uh, you know exactly. If you have any question here, you can ask me. Otherwise, I'll just quickly uh, read them and give you translation. The the daughter or the girl is watching uh, TV. Saeedun yal abu bis sayyara. We had exactly the same thing. Saeed is playing with the uh, uh, sayyara. Actually, in the text, we had ta'ira, right? But here, of course, you might think you have uh, yal abu and sayyara. That should be the object, right? So why why don't we have fatah here? It should be fatah because the sayyara is playing sayyara. You know, who can say? Uh, why we don't have a fatah here? 
Mm, because it is preceded by harful jar uh, preposition. Yes, excellent. Al ummu tuhi tu thiab. Okay, so the mother is sewing or stitching the clothes. Al abu yakraul jaraid. We just had. You know, sometimes I think the whole exercise is just to find the same thing and then make a link. You know, it's probably that's all they want you to do. But nonetheless, make sure you know all of this, um, all of this translation as well. Uh, uh, not this one. I meant to link uh, this one with this one, right? <clears throat> okay, so this is, uh, I want you guys to translate this one. Please give it a shot. Al waladu yakhtasirul qissata. Yes, excellent. The boy shortened the story. Oh, shortened in a way, like you know, you're putting in the past tense. That's the only would be my problem here because it's a yakhtasir is the present tense. So you can see the boy shortening or shortens uh, his, uh, his the, the story. Okay, so that's that's the only thing. But very good. So the past tense would be uh, past, past tense would be ikhtasara. 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 Okay, so Albintu Tadhabu Lin The the daughter is going for sleep. Okay, so quickly we'll just read this much and then we'll wrap up. Then we have uh, here Shukran Ya Bakr. Okay, uh, Shukran, we talked about thanks. Afwan Ya Walidi. Okay, so this is the exercise. Make sure you know uh, these things. If somebody does something, remember the Jazakallah Khairan. We use this because why we are more. Uh, connected with this thing because we learn we, we learn this one from the islamic context you know most of us you know even somebody who's not studying arabic they know jazakallah khairan right um, that you know we anybody we use that in context of saying thank you but remember that statement has a lots of weight that statement has a lots of weight Meaning you are really, this is because number one, not only you're thanking him, you are making a literally pray a dua for him. So, but, uh, and we say it because this is the only thing we know. But the Arabs, when like, meaning someone who is growing up in the language, that is not their default. The default would be thank you. You do something simple thing, you say, thank you. You say shukran. And and they will not just keep on saying Jazakallah Khair. You know, this would happen if you are if they have done something very grateful, uh, something very nice, something you know you are, you know you literally want to give them a dua. Like you might say, okay, why? What's the problem if you give them dua? Yeah, you can give dua to someone all the time, not a problem. But you have to understand the usage, right? So any the sh thanks is not the same thing as like saying may Allah, you know, um, uh, give you reward. That's pretty exactly what you're saying. Jazakallah khairis, may Allah give you reward. Which is not the same thing as a, as a thank you. Right? So uh, that's, <clears throat> that's why uh, just keep in mind. So you you, you might want to use shukran once in a while. Something, if somebody did something, you know, shukran. You know, something like that. And then answer is the afwan. And I think all of them are, these two are the same. Qalatil uh, the mother said, akhtasiri, uh, ikhtasiri. It shouldn't be, uh, it should not be Hamzatul Qata should be Hamzatul Wasal. Yeah, Fatima. Qal al Ab, father said, Mada Takrao, Ya Bakr, you know, it's very simple. Qal al Waladu, Tusbihu ala Khai. So remember, I give you a lot of talk about the Tusbihu and everything. You know, keep that aside for now, but do get familiar with this expression. Tusbihu ala Khai. So this is a, a modern expression, rather, but you know, uh, good to know. It means uh, good night. Tusbihina ala khair is for the family. Kamisa. This expression you have to know. Kamisa. Uh, again, you will pronounce with the kasra here. You say kamisa, which means what time, right? Shukran, afwan. Okay, kala. Okay. Okay, so tawadda is it's a mistake here. Tawadda. 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 Anybody can guess. We had this word. What does it mean? Tawadda. Yes, good, good. So this is a command verb for, for the making udu. Okay, so excellent. I think uh, this is good for now. Uh, we can stop here. No problem. Inshallah, next time we will start from uh, the rest.